in AI generation processing speed is very important. During this recent month, we've seen many diffusion models released that require a lot of memory during runtime execution. Now, we have new custom nodes called Comfy Wave Speed. This allows us to optimize memory handling and speed for your Comfy UI workflow execution. It works with image diffusion models and also AI video models like LTX and Hunyuan videos. And of course, for images, we're able to run it with Flux. So let's check it out, how to install these custom nodes. Here, as you can see, is the GitHub project page. You can go to this page, and the link will be provided in the description below. You can access it and scroll down to the installation section. If you're familiar with how to install this, do a git clone in your custom nodes folder. After that, boot up your comfy UI. Of course, before that, you'll need to install any requirements necessary to run these custom nodes. This is because these custom nodes are all about PyTorch. We need some compatible versions to run it. For Windows users, you'll have to install Triton for Windows. As it doesn't come with the Windows operating system, you'll need to install it separately. You can come here to install it from the wheel. Before that, remember to check your CUDA versions and also your Torch versions existing installation on your Windows machine. You'll need to check the version number. The best one, of course, for CUDA is using CUDA 12.5 or even other 12x versions as they work as well. My version on Windows is 12.4, which is able to install this. But when using the wheel, you have to check the numbers. You also have to check the CPU because there's something highlighted here for NVIDIA GPU support, AMD GPU, or Intel XP, another fancy name Intel is making for something new here. But yeah, if you're using an AMD GPU, click this link to use the AMD GPU installation. That's all you need to remember and be aware of before doing the installation here. So. To install from the wheel, we have to go through this guide, check if we have the proper Windows versions, and then use the command here. For CP, as you can see right here, if you're using different Python versions, you'll have to change these numbers as well. For example, if you're using Python 3.11, then in this text here, CP3 should be CP311, replace this text. Or like in my case, I'm using Python 3.12, so I have to find the 3.12 version here. That means it's already showing in the link and I can download this zip library file to work on my system. Once you've confirmed your Torch and Python versions, you can click to step four, download the wheel, press the release button here, and you'll see a list of different versions. Go to the latest update here. As you can see, I've got my setup for CP312, which is for my Python version 3.12. I just downloaded these files and executed them in my command prompt window. In the command prompt window, what I did was check the Python version 3.12, Go to the Comfy UI Custom Nodes folder, install the Comfy Wave Speed GitHub project, and clone the files here. Then, I went back to the Comfy UI folder, installed the wheel I just showed, and ran the pip install command with the file name. After that, we're ready to go. Of course, there's an easier way. You can go back to this list, find the one that works, and check. For example, you can do the first one here. Just copy the link of this folder file. Go back to the command prompt window and use pip install with the link, just like what's shown in the GitHub project demo command prompt. Press enter and it'll run the installation process for you. Okay, back to the custom nodes themselves. Here, you'll see the section showing that it's able to support various models in Comfy UI, like Flux and LTX natively, as well as Hunyuan Video natively, where you're using the applied first block cache before the diffusion model loads. I've got an example here where you can see in my Comfy UI, I'm currently generating AI videos using Hunyuan videos, but I still have the memory to record the videos right here. Also, the whole workflow isn't frozen, the web UI isn't frozen, so I can still work on this tutorial. Here, the UNet loader for GGUF is also able to work, or in the normal way, you can use the load diffusion model to connect the model's data. It's also able to work as well. The concept is, that it's going to apply caching for the block of data when you load the diffusion model. This is one of the nodes that's used before passing any model data into your workflow for the sampling process. And then there's the compile model, which is another way to make the model data go even faster. Let's try this one. There are also other nodes in the wave speed here. 
As you can see, when you right click your mouse and go to wave speed, you'll see this menu item here. Go to this section and you'll see the load and quantize diffusion model. So what it does is, if you have something like a safe tensors file, you can load it and quantize it. That's also able to work. Or if you want to quantize the models, I'm not sure how that's going to output the quantized GUF, but it looks like this isn't for that. It's only if you have .safe tensors files. Then we get the models data and pass that as an output for the workflow. Here, the quantized model is going to act like, you know, when we use GGUF file extension model files, where you have quantizations for the model's data. Just to put it simply, this is like a compression of the data set in the models that's able to work during runtime. It's not going to export GGUF files for you in these custom nodes. Of course, we can't expect just one little node to do a whole system's job. So yeah, this works. These custom nodes are basically targeting the model's data. As you can see, all the node connections are using the purple dot, which is all focused on loading the model's data when we need to speed up the execution process, when we need to quantize the model's data set and then pass that to our workflow for generation sampling. I'll try that with the Honyuan videos right now and see how it goes. Okay, so I've been generating videos using this model caching method, and I did it with the GGUF quantization model. Now, if you want to know how to install GGUF, check out my videos. I've provided the link in the description below. You can also, of course, use the normal source files with the load diffusion model as well. Both work. I've tested it. So, whenever you want to switch the model loader, you can enable, for example, the load model, connect the model's output to apply first block, and it will do the caching for the model's data as well. It's the same method for the node connections here. Then we pass the output of the model's data, the purple dot right here, back to the model loader where I have separate different groups for the Hinyuan videos. So here, I've created one video using this setup. I used 50 sampling steps. Actually, I put it higher because I wanted 121 frames. So we have a longer video length. I wanted to test how this wave speed helps with generation times in Hunyuan videos. Let's check the command prompt window. As you can see, I'm using 50 steps and it's taking about two minutes to generate the animations. Since I'm using high steps and a longer video length, it's taking two minutes to generate that. But usually, if you're not using the caching model data method, it would take even longer. Right here, my workflow's most time-consuming part isn't the face swap process, it's actually the upscale process, generating all the frames. And lastly, it goes to the sound effect. I've got the audio sound effect here. I haven't used wave speed here because we don't have the purple line for the model's data that's compatible with the MM audio model loader. So you have to be cautious and aware of that. When using wave speed, you need the compatible model's data type, which is the purple dot here, to connect it. That's the simplest way to recognize how you can connect the nodes back to Hanyun videos or use it for other diffusion models. So, here's my example of the generated video. It's quite nice. Wave speed hasn't influenced or lowered the quality of the videos. And since I'm using 50 steps, it took two minutes on my system. I'm using an NVIDIA 4090, and it's able to generate quite decent videos here. Back when Hunyuan videos first launched, using these settings with a 5 second video length and scheduling steps at 20 or 30, it would take like half an hour to generate. But now, we've got a lot of improvements, doing the cache, saving memory, and recently, I've added purge of RAM, which helps a lot too. After you generate the videos for the latent data or latent image data, you don't need that for further steps in the workflow process. So I purge the model's data, but don't purge the cache because the cache holds the image frame data for the videos. I'll turn that off and only purge the model's data cache to clean it up in your VRAM. That way you get more space to move on to the next steps, like face swap and upscaling. I'm able to do that normally now, five to six second videos without any problems on my system. And then I also clean up the model's data after upscaling because, you know, once you've finished upscaling, you don't need the model's data for the upscaled models anymore. So I clean that up and then pass the image frames to the audio section for using MM Audio to create sound effects. Of course, this is the last step of the workflow. So I don't use the purge data to clean up the VRAM here. I just bypass all the audio and image frames and I get the final result at the top where everything is stitched together in the final video output. 
let's check it out here. We've got some pretty nice stuff going on in this video, like the TikTok dance or the cheerleader I defined in the text prompts. So it's doing a dance in the football field and the animations in this generation are pretty smooth. There hasn't been any downgrade from the GGUF quantization or the model cache block and wave speed. That's pretty nice. We can cut down the generation time, especially in diffusion transformer models like Hanyuan videos. And if you have Flux or LTX, it works here as well. They've provided some workflow examples for Flux and LTX. I've tried LTX here too. It's a very basic text to video workflow they've set up. The same concept applies with the model's node connections, from the low checkpoints to the applied block cache, and then to compile models. It's all focusing on the model's data here before passing it to the custom sampler. The same concept applies to Hunyuan videos and Flux as well. So yeah, this is a pretty nice handy tool you can use if you want to speed up your generation times. And of course, everyone wants to do that. Who wouldn't, right? So I think everyone should try it out. Installing these custom nodes isn't some fancy new technique, but it does help with memory handling. It uses Torch compiled to handle more memory storage and how it's allocated in your VRAM. And if you have shared memory, that will also be handled by your system. This way, you can have pretty smooth generation times without problems. Once again, I added the purge VRAM step just to clean it up after the Hunyuan video is generated. We don't need that data anymore anyway. So that's it for this video. I hope this helped you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.